What's going on, boys? Today we are talking INTP self. When people tell you to be yourself, or ask you to tell them about yourselves, that's difficult for INTPs because the way INTPs would feel comfortable or feel most correct answering that question isn't the answer people are expecting. Ourselves don't operate the way an FI self would work. And quick disclaimer before we get into INTP self, some INTPs do have strong senses of self. And typically, those INTPs are the most alienated and the most spiteful of humanity. These INTPs are antigens. Their identity is based on, based on being alienated from the group and the hurt of being alienated from the group. So, if you're an INTP who is looking down your nose at this video thinking, I know exactly who I am, what are you even saying? Ask yourself how much of your identity comes from hatred for other people. Now, into typically how INTP self works. There are two layers of this, maybe three. The two main ones are INTP self in a vacuum and INTP self around other people. We'll start with in a vacuum. If an INTP is alone on a desert island, or in a dark room walking back and forth alone for three months, their self will be what they know, what they want to know, and what they want. And if you ask them, tell me who you are, they will start telling you about things they know or things they're trying to figure out, things they want. And then, most people, after you start doing that, INTP, they will say, no, that's great, but tell me about you. And then that's when the existential horror doesn't creep in, it kicks down the door. Because we just told you who we are. We are our accumulated and growing knowledge of stocks, of history, of media, of cars, of weird events. That is who we are. And now you're expecting something from us, we immediately get the sense we can't provide, or you will be unsatisfied with because you were unsatisfied with the answer we just gave you which is our most honest answer that question is invalidating and stressful because our knowledge what we've accumulated and our interests are ourselves and if you want us to continue being honest and trying to answer the question honestly and that isn't good enough we might go to our urge to learn these things but urges are hard to explain, and because they're hard to explain, we don't have a super deep understanding of what they are, where they come from, or why they're here, other than just chemicals in our brains. That's when the existential horror breaks in and starts murdering us, because if that, if our self isn't our self, then what are we besides just some urges and the result of those urges. But that answer won't satisfy you either, right? Honesty doesn't work. So, time to lie. Let's pick some positive traits about you that we will wear on ourselves to satisfy you, to get you to shut up and go away. Or, we'll pick some super general positive things and claim those as ourself or we'll take some traumas we've experienced and use those as ourselves. Even though, again, those are just points of information, not a self the way an FI type expects you to have a self. But then, after you give that answer, the FI type will go, Well, I saw you hanging around this person and you were acting this way. That must be your self. Or was that just a lie, too? 
And the answer is, that is also a self. That is an INTP's self around people. FI types like to make that out to be a mask, and we call it a mask, but it isn't, at least not necessarily. Around people, an INTP's self is the self they adopt around those people. At which point an FI type will say, well that's lying, you should just be yourself around them, but it doesn't seem to click for them that adapting ourselves to other people is a self. Part of our self is our interest in adapting to other people. That's part of our actuation or individuation. That, I think that might be the word. Part of our individuation is acting differently according to different people. That is part of self. If you ask us not to do that, one, that takes away part of our actual self, which is fluid, like Proteus, and we end up being right back, or we end up right back where we started with an inert lump of mold gathering information. Some examples of an authentic, or my my authentic self around different sorts of people I like. Mean INFJs, or, well, all INFJs are assholes, but some of them are more in touch with that and honest about it than others. One of my favorite selves is with mean, openly mean INFJs and laughing together at people and getting them to say things that make them look bad without their realizing what's happening. Any TP can kind of do this, but the right INFJs are so good at it and so cutting with it, it's endlessly funny. And validating, because you get to dislike people and express your dislike of people without ever having that F.E. cover blown and needing to deal with the consequences because the INFJ is so good at running shit like that. Another self I'm super fond of. Being a weird and likable ENTJ's court advisor. Dominant and ambitious TE is attractive and auxiliary NI makes them weird. Their minds are sharp, but you never know exactly how or why they're working. So I like being around them and seeing what they get up to, then asking what they think about it, analyzing it, presenting it to them, getting their analysis of my analysis, and then analyzing their analysis of my analysis while they continue to do dumb, flagrant, arrogant shit, and I run FE defense for them. It's a lot easier to use FE for other people than for yourself. It's a fun, productive, learny dynamic. Another self I'm fond of. Hanging out with SFJs, and participating in the Good Vibes Mafia. Knocking on your door with cookies, love, comfort, and attention. Always have a nice thing to say. Always have a wholesome thing to do. And we are shaking each other's hands and patting each other on the back after every smile achieved. Validating strangers and loved ones has never been more fun. Now, from the outside, these three selves and all the other ones around all the different sorts of people would seem disingenuous or inauthentic to an FI type, but be well, rather because we are not being, quotes, ourselves around all of them. But an INTP's self is that change between people. 
it's the face for or in front of our accumulated knowledge and drive to gather knowledge. That gathering process is still happening in the background, and maybe with some people we'll be more forward about it than with others, but that change between people is a constant. Where an ENFP or an INTJ will shove politics in everyone's faces, because it is imperative that you make your bed and wash your penis, bucko. Or, using a straw is more offensive than murdering someone, for instance. And INTP will adapt to everyone. Or at least feel the pressure to and bring out or repress certain parts of themselves to get by. That is a constant in the same way FI works as a constant. Now, there are selves I think INTPs prefer to others, and those preferences will be different for each INTP, but that flexibility is there. But if you want authenticity, look for those preferences. My preferences are the ones I listed. Getting to be negative around someone who gets it but is different enough to have a bit of bridging going on. Studying a weird, eccentric, and attractive person. And running shit with cookies and cuddles. I like myself around certain ENFPs too, because I get to be more of that moldy, information gathery self. Because with the right ENFPs, their FI starts looking a lot like FE. It isn't, but it looks like it. And you get that SI, this person is sane, and NE, this person is funny, sense. Which is weird to say about ENFPs because stereotypes are all, ENFPs are all insane. But with the right ENFPs, they are pretty sane while still being funny. And you get to be more, or I get to be more, of that I am here for the information, let's talk about it, self. I want to make a video on the FE, or FI, that kind of looks like FE in certain ENFPs thing. Getting sidetracked. Then there's the third layer to self. Somewhere in between isolated self and around people self. This layer is incorporating aspects of other people into ourselves self. I don't know about other INTPs, but I have a habit of picking things up from other people or liking aspects of characters in fiction or dead people and bringing those things into my self and working them to suit me. Much of my self is stuff I've learned and developed, but a significant portion of myself is or are a significant portion is Things are things? I think it's are things. I've gathered from other people. Tastes, interests, ways of dressing, ways of speaking, objectives, all that. When I really like someone, or when someone says something that makes a lot of sense, shows me something I didn't know I would like, I incorporate it. A large part of myself feels like an amalgamation of aspects of other people. And I carry that amalgamation around other people, other other people, which we kind of talked about in FE and Discourse. But I also keep those things in mind or use them when I am alone. You should dress better and less aggressively. That makes sense. I dress less aggressively. Kombucha juice is good. Kombucha juice is good. I drink it. 
You should wear your hair down. It'll make you look less stressed. I wear my hair down. You should be more interested in supernatural stuff. That makes sense. That lines up with some things I believe. I'll look into them. You should be careful never to blow up someone's spot, and when you're dealing with people you dislike, you should look for these things. I am conscious not to fuck with other people's stuff accidentally, and when I'm dealing with threatening people, I keep these things in mind. I didn't come up with any of these things on my own. Other people recommended them, they worked, or I liked them, and now, even when they're gone, I still use them. Even alone, I still use them. Those things are part of myself because I use them in public and private life, but they aren't me. Capital M, me, or in quotes, me. Which makes that aspect of the INTP self feel disingenuous, maybe make some of that existential horror creep in, like are you just a parasite gathering shiny traits from other people and wearing them like jewelry rather than actually internalizing them or developing them yourself. But I think there is an authenticity in what sticks and what's discarded. So, that was the INTP self and the reason the tell me about yourself or be yourself thing then subsequent rejection of it from the person who asked it or demanded it is so invalidating. First layer, INTPs are what they know, what they're interested in, and what they want. Second layer, INTPs are every sort of person they become around different sorts of people because a constant in their self is that Proteus-like adaptability. And the third layer of the INTP self is the stuff we pick up and carry on for the rest of our lives from other people. And I forgot the final layer because I'm stupid or maybe this is another self-defense mechanism. An INTP's insecurities. This final layer is probably attached to the first layer, but if you want to find out who an INTP really is, figure out what makes them depressed, what makes them spurg out, what they compensate for. That shit will be a concrete shoes constant across all people, at all times. And even once they've worked through those insecurities, the impressions of them will still be there emotionally, like scars you can pick up on if you are looking for an INTP's core like that. Figure out what really bothers them, has bothered them in the past too. But that about rippity wraps this one up. I hope you enjoyed watching because I certainly enjoyed making it. I wish people were more accepting of I'm interested in learning about this and I like bullshitting as an answer to who are you or tell me about yourself, or be yourself. Like if you enjoyed, because it helps me out a lot. Subscribe if you haven't, because we do this shit sometimes, and comment your thoughts, because I love hearing from you. I still haven't figured out exactly what makes an FI self work the way it does, but if any FI types want to tell me how their self operates, I would love to hear it. It makes absolutely no sense to me, but I would love to figure out how to conceptualize it. Thanks again for watching, everybody. We have a lot of fun on this channel. So much fun, in fact. You could fill a fountain pen with the fun and write out all the fun you've had this year. And the fun is like ink. Because the fun will never go away as long as you remember it until you get dementia. But that's how much fun we have on this channel. And I look forward to doing this with you guys again in the future.